the first thing that was confronting was the fact is uh, how in the world couldn't we be able to switch off the covalent bonding of the water molecule without con consuming a tremendous amount of electrical power as opposed to the electrolysis process that we all know. What we addressed was number one. <laughs> Slow down, okay. First thing that we were considering. He's right. It goes at 3.30. No. First thing we considered was how in the world can you naturally be able to switch off the covalent bonding of the water molecule without consuming a tremendous amount of electrical energy. So when we looked at the water molecule, we realized that when the hydrogen atoms unite with the oxygen atoms, under the law of physics, something's got to happen. And when the oxygen atom accepts the hydrogen electrons, then you develop an electrical imbalance by which you now have eight protons as opposed to ten electrons, so therefore the oxygen atom takes on a negative electrical charge. Since the hydrogen atom is now sharing its electron, and since its proton is positive electrically charged, then the hydrogen atoms will take on positive electrical charges. Therefore, the atoms of the water molecule is being held together by an electrical attraction force. It's quite obvious then that if you would now expose the water molecule to an external electrical voltage force, then you would, should, and would, and can actually separate the water molecule by a physical force through an electrical attraction, as Coulomb and Newlam has stated clearly, as that you can use voltage and electronic circuit to perform work. We also realize that as you will expose the water molecule to a high pulse voltage frequency and as you raise the voltage amplitude, we now can take the water molecule into the liquid, the gas ionization state. In the process, we restrict the amps and allow voltage to take over. At the same time that we are exposing the water molecule to an external electrical force of opposite polarity to perform the work of splitting the water molecule, since water is a dielectric liquid, Okay. That's almost impossible. <laughs> Natural water is a dielectric liquid. And as such, when you expose the water to a high pulse voltage frequency, the water will actually take on an electrical charge. So at the same time that we are sp splitting the water molecule by now allowing the water molecule to elongate and change the time share rate of its electron, as the water takes on the electrical charges, then the hydrogen electrical charge, positive electrical charges will increase at the same time that the negative electrical charge of the oxygen atom will increase. And as a result, the negative charge electron, which is its covalent electron, is now being attracted to the positive charge hydrogen atom. And since the oxygen atom has a negative electrically charged, a repelling action occurs, and therefore we are now switching off the covalent bonding of the water molecule, and therefore satisfying the first major requirement of NASA, being able to release hydrogen gas from ordinary natural water and do it economically. This was one of the apparatuses which we had shown under 101 and the United States Patent Office and the World Patent Office that come in and show operability. If you show operability, you receive your patents. The water fuel cell technology is 180 degrees out of phase of the electrolysis process. We set up an environment. So, can we please uh, the light etwas dunkler machen, bitte? Then can we see the tears better. Sehen. Dankeschön. We set up a non chemical environment. The materials that we're using to set up the voltage field is ordinary stainless steel 304 material, which does not, it's chemically inert to liberated hydrogen and oxygen atoms liberated in water exposed to a high voltage field. You add no chemicals into the process. In order to do this, I now had to invent a new form of electronic circuit, which we call the voltage intensifier circuit. And since water is a dielectric liquid, liquid, and if you put it between two voltage plates, you now form a capacitor. And every electronic man knows that if you would put a coil in series to a capacitor, you now develop what's called a resonant charging choke. And so we're now putting two coils on opposite side of the capacitor, and we are now forming a pulse frequency 
circuit by which you will now once hit the resonant frequency of water, of natural water, amp flow drops down to a minimum, allowing voltage to take off to affinity if the electronic components will allow that to take place. Basically, what we're doing in the pulsing circuit is that as the pulsing circuit enters into the resonant charging choke, it creates the electromagnetic field, which now restricts amp flow to allow voltage to perform its work. Now, in physics, we know and have known for a long time that voltage does, in fact, perform work. But heretofore, no one ever dreamed of using this technology in reference of using uh, liberating hydrogen and economically from water. So we're now restricting the amp flow and allow voltage to take over. We had found out that once you restrict the amps and allow voltage amplitude to be increased, hydrogen gas was being generated on an exponential function. Okay. Okay. Those who are electronic engineers, you know that there are two aspects to electrical power. There are amps and there are voltages. The only time you consume the electrical power is you consume it in the form of amps. If you were to restrict the amp flow, you have voltage left over. Voltage is a form of potential energy. It is not consumed energy. And as a result, we're now using potential energy to perform work. Yeah. Yeah. We had found out that the electrical polarization process occurs in all forms of natural water, even including the most purest form of distilled water. Once we realize the fu fundamental operational characteristics and parameters of the electrical polarization process, we now raise the voltage amplitude by which we now take the water into the liquid to gas ionization state. As we take it into the liquid to gas ionization state, the voltage potential is now ejecting or pulling away the electrons from the combustible gas atoms. We had found out that when you attenuate voltage amplitude in reference to false frequency, you will hit the phenomena of resonant action by which you are producing a tremendous quantum leap in hydrogen generation over the prior art. We also found out that once you hit resonance and subject it to the stimulation of the pulse voltage and then switch it off, then the hydrogen will continually be produced on the power off put stage. Example being that once you hit a resonance, we could excite it for five seconds and you're producing gas for 94 seconds. You divide five into 94, we were producing gas, hydrogen gas, 19 times more on the power off put stage than on the power input stage. We also realize that if you will leave the pulse voltage frequency continuously or constant, and don't touch the apparatus, hydrogen gas is now being produced on a geometrical configuration and will continue to increase in production of a hydrogen gas until such extent that you would reach the maximum flow rate of water going into the resonant cavity. So we now have another form of control of regulating hydrogen gas production. These operational parameters now satisfy the second major requirement of NASA to use hydrogen as a fuel source that we can control the hydrogen gas on demand. We are now starting to aid the electrical polarization process by injecting laser energy into the system. And by doing so, we are now causing even a faster and a greater rate of hydrogen production to occur, as you see right here. But we are also doing something else. We want to take the combustible gas atoms even to a higher energy state. This is an example of a laser injection resonant cavities. Those cavities themselves like to be extremely small since they're taken on a form of a capacitor. We use solid state lasers in injection of photon energy into the process. Those in electronics, they are simple little LEDs, light emitting diodes, but they will produce a, a coherent light. We don't need a large light intensity to accomplish the task. We don't want to focus the energy down to a concentrated point. We want to allow the light or the photon energy to be absorbed by those liberated combustible gas atoms. There's an example of what happens when you subject 
water molecules to a high pulse voltage frequency and allowing the laser uh, pulse frequency to be superimposed within the process. As we started to do our experimentation, we had realized that there were many phenomena that were occurring in order to bring about the results of using hydrogen as a fuel source, going from the random state to the alignment to the polarization to the molecular elongation to the liquid to gas ionization state, but we are also going down to the atomic destabilization of the water molecule. This is an example now of a vertical array resonant cavity stacked together, and as the lower resonant cavity releases its electrically charged combustible gas atoms, it is now injected into the second cavity, which increases the process and eventually will now allow a tremendous amount of hydrogen gas to be produced at the top.